Hello everybody, this is Dr. Aparna from Anurag Group of Institutions, CVSR College of Engineering. What is the most important human value that we cherish the most? I am sure all of you will say it is love. Love for fellow human beings, love for the people around us. Human values have not changed over the years. They have been the same, but with time over the years, men have changed. Their outlook to human values have changed. We have become more self-centered, more egoistic. We are less accommodative. We are less tolerant. We are less patient. Because of all this, there is conflict. Conflict between humans, conflict within the country, conflict between countries. How can we mitigate this conflict? How can we see that this conflict is erased? This can be done only with love and love alone. Because human beings have that inherent quality of love within them. And it is love that can diminish all hatred. It is love that can erase all ill feelings that we have for one another. In the year 1947, when the Britishers left us, they divided the country into two states, India and Pakistan. Of course, we are the only country in the world that got independence without a civil war. But the partition caused a lot of disturbance. It caused a lot of heartache. People had to move from Pakistan to India and Muslims had to move from India to Pakistan. This migration caused a lot of strife. There was a lot of hatred. There was a lot of hatred between Hindus and Muslims at that point of time. And it was like a genocide. Many people died. And perhaps it was the worst moments in the history of India, where we lost the people whom we loved the most. Because India and Pakistan were one country, and the Britishers divided into two. The story that we are going to read about today, A Grain of Mustard Seed, talks about the times of partition, when there are two friends, a Hindu and a Muslim, and how despite the partition and despite the hatred, their love persists. The goodness of being human persists. They love each other despite belonging to different cultures and different backgrounds. Let us go ahead and learn more about the author of this lesson. The author of this lesson, A Grain of Mustard Seed, is Edith Mary Pargeter, also popularly known as Ellis Peters. She was born on September 28, 1913. She was a British writer. She was famous for her mysteries. She also wrote histories and in historical context. She also translated a lot of classics of Czechoslovakia into English. She was a very popular writer of her time. She wrote a highly popular series called Brother Catfail, which was medieval mysteries and it was also made into a television series. She was appointed the officer of the Order of British Empire for her services to literature in the year 1944. The mystery writers of America awarded her the Edgar Allan Poe Award for her story Death and Joyful Woman in the year 1963. She was a great writer. Now, let us see what she has to say about the partition and the friendship that continued despite the partition in the lesson, A Grain of Mustard Seed. Let us understand the significance of the title of this lesson, A Grain of Mustard Seed. What is a mustard seed? It is a small seed, but it grows into a plant, a plant that is a herb, that cures, that helps people, that has medicinal value. What has medicinal value in this story? What is a grain that she is talking of in this story? That grain is love. That grain is friendship. That grain is patience that the two friends had for themselves. This love grows into a tree. It grows into a big plant. And that is what Ellis is trying to tell us. 
she is trying to say that a mustard seed though it is small if it is planted it becomes a medicinal herb which is useful for all human beings the seed of love that is sown between two people grows into a plant that can never ever wither despite all the problems that the friends face the love only grows that is exactly what happened between Iqbal and Suniti's father they love grew they loved each other more despite the partition the story a grain of mustard seed revolves around the time of partition when india was divided into india and east bengal it was a time when refugees were pouring into india the story starts with a group of friends gathered in a house and they listen to the sound of a train pulling into the station they are quite worried about the number of refugees that were coming into india they were feeling sad for the conditions that these people had to undergo and the problems that these people had to undergo and then suddenly one of the friends remarks when everything around us appears to be sane when the world appears to be good suddenly something goes wrong and we lose all hope we lose our balance suniti who is one among the friend does not agree to her friend she starts narrating an incident from her life she starts talking about what happened to her when she was young it's like a flashback mode she goes back to her childhood and she starts telling this story she starts telling her friends the story when she was living in lahore before 1947 when india was divided into india and pakistan her father was a jeweler in lahore and they were quite a well to do family they were quite rich they were well off and they had many many friends father had a muslim friend his name was mahdar iqbal iqbal was very poor he was a shoemaker and once in a while he would make shoes for suniti and her mother father liked his work so much that he started throwing business at him he started telling all his friends that iqbal was a great shoemaker and slowly iqbal started earning money he started making more and more money and he started repaying his debts slowly he saved more than 1500 rupees because he had a dream he had a dream of having his own shop in the main bazaar father was very happy that iqbal was doing so well both friends had a passion to play chess they would always sit together and start playing it and while doing so they always felt that they were putting the world right both of them were lean but in their physical appearance though they were similar but mentally they were different suniti's father was excitable aggressive whereas iqbal was a solid tree who took in whatever her father had to say he was a calm and patient man both friends loved each other and they had firm faith in humanity suniti's father said that god was benevolent and that man was perfectible because man had an inherent goodness in him and god helped man to bring out that goodness this faith was always there in suniti's father's heart he always believed that man was a very good person and god created him like a good human being it was a time of partition as i had already told you and slowly there were communal rights in pakistan people were moving out of the country and going to india especially the hindus in fact only the hindus suniti's house was burned their shop was looted but then father was losing hope and father was losing his heart they did not want to leave lahore just as yet they still hoped they could stay back there and continue living along with their friends who were muslims but that was not the case 
Let us see what happens later on. It was strange for Suniti and her family to feel that Lahore was no longer a part of India and that they had to move away and go to India. It was a very difficult time for the family, especially for her father, because as I said earlier, he had a firm faith in humanity. He had a firm faith in the humanness that man had in him. He had a faith in the goodness of mankind. They were the last to leave the country. They were the last people to go back to India. In the beginning, they thought there would never be any more trains. But finally, there was an announcement that one train would leave from Pakistan to India. In early in the morning, they crept out of the house and they went to the railway station. As they were moving towards the station, they were surrounded by their neighbors, the people who were very close to them. All of them were threatening them. All of them were shouting at them. All of them were calling them bad names. This was something which they could not understand. They could not digest. Why would their neighbors, why would their friends, why would the people whom they had lived with so many years suddenly hate them just because they were Hindus? Finally, they reached the railway platform. Of course, there was a lot of police around to contain them. But once the Hindus reached the platform, the police could not contain the Muslims. The Muslims broke the barricades and they came with stones and sticks and started pelting them on the Hindus. Among them was Mahadhar Iqbal. Father saw his friend in the crowd and he for an instant thought that Iqbal had come to say goodbye to him. But then when he saw the expression of Mahadhar Iqbal, he took a step back. Iqbal started screaming at his father. He started calling him a dog. He started using bad words. He reviled at him. He went to her father and started searching his pockets as if her father was a thief. He took out everything from the pockets to see if they was taking any valuables with them from Pakistan to India. And then finally, when he found nothing, he threw everything back into his father's pockets and pushed him. Father fell down. He broke his spectacles. He picked him up again and threw him into the train. Father was stunned. He was shocked. His face was the color of mud. He could not understand why was Iqbal behaving like that. Mother, on the other hand, was very strong. She did not have the same faith as father had on humanity. She knew that they were Muslims and she knew that they were angry that being Hindus, they should not be here. She knew that the Muslims would never like them for being Hindus. She got up onto the train along with Suniti and then started the journey back to India. The train, of course, didn't move for a very, very long time. But then when Suniti saw her father's face, when the mother saw the father's face, they thought he would be inconsolable. It was very difficult to console father and they were trying ways to see how he could be pacified. Let us see what happens next. During the partition, when there was this mass exodus of people from Pakistan to India and from India to Pakistan, there were a lot of communal riots between Hindus and Muslims. They fought with each other, they tore each other apart, they hated each other for being in Hindus or for being Muslims. And the same thing happened in the train that Suniti and her family got up. Many people died in the train journey. They were, but the family was very lucky. They survived and they finally reached Amritsar. But let us see what happened on the train. When Iqbal threw father onto the train, Suniti was so sad for her father. Father could not take in the fact that Iqbal was, had behaved so badly with him. Mother, on the other hand, tried to console. Suniti wanted to console her father too. Mother tried to reason with the father and said, that is exactly how Iqbal had to behave because he had 
to prove to the other Muslims that he was a true Muslim and he hated the Hindus. Everybody in, around the neighborhood knew that Iqbal was a very close friend of father's. And if he had shown any affection to father, they would have hated him more. They would have made Iqbal's life miserable in Pakistan. So to prove everybody that he was a true Muslim and he hated the Hindus, he had acted that way. He was very angry with father. He had reviled him. He had scolded him. He had called him the dog. But father did not agree to that. He was very upset. He reasoned that if, if Iqbal hated him so much, he should have never come to the railway station. He could have stayed away. He could have never seen his face. He was very upset that Iqbal behaved so badly with him. In fact, he started crying. Suniti did not know what to do. Suniti could not console her father. Suniti heard her father mutter, if Iqbal could change, if Iqbal could have hatred within him, then it was not difficult for others to change because father and Iqbal were close friends and they both believed in one thing and that was they had great faith in humanity. When father said that God did not care, Suniti was stunned. Lots of thoughts started creeping into her minds. She could not understand why father said God did not care. She started questioning, if God did not care, would he be born ten times like Lord Vishnu to come and save the people on the earth? Then she thought, if God did not care, would he then send Jesus Christ to help the people on this earth? If God did never care, would he give law to Moses on Mount Sinai? And if God did not really care, would Buddha, who got the realization, who got nirvana, who got salvation, turn his back to humanity? He did not do that. He came back to humanity and he taught them the ways and method of attaining salvation. Suniti had this firm faith in her that God existed and God did good for men. She wanted her father to get back that belief. She wanted her father to know that God really did good things. She hoped that God would give a proof. She did not know how that proof would be there. Suddenly she saw her father crying. She wanted to take the handkerchief out of his pocket. And when she took the handkerchief out of her pocket, out rolled something else with it. It was a square shaped tight bundle. And in that bundle were currency notes. Father was surprised. He did not understand where he got this money from. Mother instinctively covered the money because they were in a train. And she did not want people to know that they had money on them. Father was bewildered. Suniti understood. She whispered to her father and said, Who else could have given you money but Iqbal? And then father realized what happened at the railway station. Iqbal had overturned his pockets, taken out everything from it to see if father was really stealing something from them. But then he had put everything back into the pocket. While doing that, he had put in the money inside father's pocket. When father saw the money, he was happy. But then it was not just the money. There was also a note along with the money. As father read the note, there was a smile on his face. He first read it silently and later on he started reading it aloud. Now let us see what father read in the note. I will read out this for you. Father read what Iqbal had written and this is what Iqbal wrote. Forgive me, he read, and take for my soul's sake what I greatly need to give you and what you need so much more than I. Remember me, not as I am to you today, but as I shall always be to you in spirit. I shall never know a better person. There were 1500 rupees in that bundle. Father was overwhelmed. His faith in humanity came back. He was happy that Iqbal was a true friend. 
and he was happy that Iqbal loved him despite the partition. He was happy that his love for his friend was reciprocated. When Iqbal says he had never met a better man than her father, that is what makes father happy. And that is what human relationship is all about. Human beings are capable of a lot of love. They are capable of a lot of understanding and a lot of patience. Always remember that this is a gift for us from the God. We should know how to utilize this gift for the betterment of others. What have you learned in this lesson? What is it that the lesson has taught us? The lesson has taught us to love each other. The lesson is about partition. The lesson is about a crucial stage in India's history. The lesson is about when the country is torn into two pieces of India and Pakistan. It is about migration of people from one country to the other, an exodus of people. It is about hatred that people had for each other just because they were either Hindus or Muslims. It's about the feelings that they had for each other. But despite all this hatred, despite all this communal violence, despite the fact that there were ill feelings between the two communities, here were two friends who loved each other. Here were two individuals who believed that there was something that love that existed between them. Iqbal showed his love to his father in this way. He knew that his father needed the money more than he. As I told you before, Iqbal was poor and Suniti's father was very rich. Suniti's father was a jeweler. He had a lot of money, but Iqbal was only a shoemaker. He really repaid his debts with a lot of difficulties. At the same time, he saved 1500 rupees because he had a dream of opening a shop in the bazaar. But he never kept that 1500 rupees with himself. He gave it to her father, knowing that perhaps in his entire life, he would never see his friend again. And he writes a note saying that it is you who needs the money more than me at this point of time, because you are moving to a new country. You're going to a place which does not perhaps really belong to you, even though you are a Hindu. It is a place where you need money to re-establish yourself. Therefore, you need the money more than me. Is this not love? Is this not understanding? Is this not true friendship that Iqbal had for the father? And father also could never realize that how could Iqbal behave like that with him? He could not understand that why Iqbal behaved so rudely. He mutters to himself and says, if Iqbal's heart could become hard with hatred, then it was not difficult for other men to follow the suit. He had great faith in his friend, but somewhere down the line, that faith wavered. But then when he saw the money, but then when he read the note that Iqbal had written for him, his faith in humanity came back. And that is what Suniti tries to tell her friends in her story. That even though the world is a place which is full of conflicts, there are people who exist in the world who are good. There are people who exist in the world who are doing good for others. The world exists on hope. The world exists because there are good people. The world exists because there is love, friendship, patience. And this is what we must learn, especially in the modern world, which is full of conflict, which is full of strife, which is full of hatred, which is full of vile. Let us learn one thing from this lesson, that there is something like love. There is something like friendship. There is something like giving, which is only possible for humans to do. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this lesson as much as I have enjoyed teaching it to you. And I hope this lesson would have definitely changed your way of looking at life. All the best.